For decades, Harvey Weinstein seemed like the epitome of success in the world of Hollywood. Everywhere you looked and every movie that came out seemed to have his name plastered all over it. Both of his companies, Miramax Films and the Weinstein Company produced critically acclaimed films one after another, such as Goodwill Hunting and Pulp Fiction. For a while, he was the king of Hollywood. And if you wanted to get ahead, he was the man to turn to. But behind all of the fame, success, and fortune was a monster of a man who had a near constant stream of allegations being raised against him. While people attempted to speak out about what he had done for over 30 years, the world didn't seem ready to hear them, believe their stories, or do anything about it. That is until 2017, when it all came crashing into full view with the help of an abundance of brave women with some incredible journalists willing to take a chance. With just a few articles, the whole world was soon made aware of what exactly the King of Hollywood had been up to during his illustrious career. Slowly at first, then seemingly all at once, a tidal wave of women came to speak out against him and share their stories. Many of them met up with the mogul to discuss their careers. Whether it was a role in a movie, modeling connections, or producing, Harvey was a dream person to have a business relationship with to get ahead. His consistent MO would be to invite women to a business meeting in a hotel room, only to surprise them in a robe and proposition them. No didn't seem to be in his dictionary and he did whatever he wanted. This was the ultimate abuse of power. He was a man who practically ran Hollywood and the women who were unfortunate enough to meet him were just starting out. So as more and more shared the same experiences, they remained quiet out of fear, bribery, or self-preservation. Those who attempted to speak out were effectively silenced through a terrifying array of methods, and even the men who said they knew what was going on in the darkness kept quiet. However, after some bombshell articles, there was no more being silent, and the accusations came streaming in, one thing became perfectly clear. It was time for a reckoning in Hollywood. Each new allegation shocked the masses, and slowly, criminal charges began to follow them. Now, Harvey Weinstein is no longer considered a king, but a monster a monster who is very likely to spend the rest of his life in prison. Hello and welcome to Dark Dives. I'm the Illuminati and today we will be talking about the man whose horrific actions prompted the viral spread of the hashtag MeToo movement, Harvey Weinstein. Now, this episode is going to discuss sexual assault and violence. And if this is something that might be a little too much for you to listen to at the current moment, feel free to check out any of my other episodes. In 2017, the New York Times released an article that would rock the world. Hollywood elite Harvey Weinstein was the topic. Only this time, it wasn't to praise him or announce a new upcoming movie. It was giving survivors, those who had suffered horrifying harassment from the producer, a voice. The article starts with Ashley Judd, a young actress whose story goes back almost two decades. Weinstein invited her to what was meant to be a business breakfast meeting at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Instead, Ashley was brought up to Weinstein's room where he suddenly emerged wearing only a bathrobe and soon asked her if he could give her a massage or if she would watch him while he was in the shower. This was Harvey Weinstein, one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. Turning him away or upsetting him didn't really seem like an option for someone breaking out into the business. Ashley remembers thinking to herself, how do I get out of the room as fast as possible without alienating Harvey Weinstein? Ashley wasn't the first to ask herself this question and she certainly wouldn't be the last. The New York Times' investigation discovered allegations dating back nearly three decades that had been effectively silenced by Weinstein himself or those closest to him, lawyers, friends, and others within the industry. His behavior in Hollywood had been called an open secret, one that was known by many, but talked about by few. This by itself is pretty disgusting. And as the story continued to unfold over the years, I've always wondered why there wasn't a much bigger backlash on the other men of Hollywood. Like, I don't know, Quentin Tarantino, who clearly kept his secret. Silence is compliance. Tell on your friends if they're on this disgusting type of level, I beg of you. Now, the article is chock full of interviews, past legal filings, and emails detailing the years of victim suppression and sexual assault allegations. But little did everyone know, this was just the beginning. Following the New York Times release of their groundbreaking investigation into one of Hollywood's kings, he decided to release a statement, one that seemed both to apologize and gaslight the world at the exact same time. It started off in quite a predictable manner with him saying, I came of age in the 60s and 70s when all the rules about behavior and workplaces were different. This was the culture then. I have since learned it's not an excuse in the office or out of it to anyone. 
The whole, I grew up in a different time kind of phrase, it's very played out to me. This isn't that time and you're very well aware of that. I would love it if everyone, and I mean everyone, would immediately stop saying, I didn't know better when it comes to harassment and assault. He knew better, he just chose to still do it. But still, he begged everyone for a second chance and maybe if it was just the New York Times article, he might've actually gotten it. I mean, powerful people get second chances they don't deserve all the time. But thankfully, his second chance would never come as the days dragged on and more survivors decided that finally, it was their time to shine. A mere five days after the original article, another one popped up, this time from The New Yorker. 13 different women came forward accusing Weinstein of sexual assault and harassment, and three of them, rape. Of course, a spokesperson told the publication that any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein. Despite the little disclaimer by his spokesperson, the damage was already done. Now allegations were coming from massive female celebrities, including Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow, and everyone, and I mean pretty much everyone, was starting to come out to condemn him. Even the Obamas, whose daughter interned at Weinstein's company, came out to say that they were disgusted by the reports and quote, celebrate the courage of women who have come forward. Within a year, an astounding 87 women came out to publicly accuse Weinstein of harassment, abuse, and sexual assault. Some were actresses who met with the producer at the start of their careers. Others were already established, looking for roles that could bring them to the next level of success. And then there were the women who worked with him. Almost all of them had met with Weinstein out of the promise of a business meeting or a chance to discuss their careers, only to be confronted by the man in a bathrobe, pressuring them into a sexual situation while telling them saying no would destroy their future. With every story, one thing remained the same, power dynamics. Weinstein was a high-ranking, well-known, celebrated male in the world of Hollywood, and to cross him was to risk your career, and he knew it. For many, this is why they remained quiet for so long. And for others, their silence came from fear as Harvey deployed his army of spies to make sure that his victims stayed quiet. Harvey Weinstein was not able to keep his abuse, harassment, and abhorrent behavior a secret by himself, because of course he had help. A carefully crafted team of people followed behind him and plans were meticulously developed to keep the open secret in Hollywood impossible to prove. As the stories began to rapidly emerge, too many people in Hollywood admitted to having a feeling that something was wrong or just straight up knowing what was going on in the shadows. This by itself is disgusting enough but it was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of how Weinstein remained safe in Hollywood. First, there were the NDAs. When Zelda Perkins was working with Weinstein as his assistant, she, along with another colleague, was sexually assaulted. Scared and unsure of what to do, she and the colleague agreed to sign NDAs and settle, never revealing their secret until the news about the sexual predator came crashing into the world years later. The settlements, including one famously made with actress Rose McGowan, were often portrayed as ways to avoid litigation and buy peace. And as they kept popping up, no one seemed to bat an eye. The women were desperate to protect their privacy, their careers, and their lives, and Harvey took advantage of it. Slowly but surely, each allegation that emerged seemingly evaporated as women were paid into silence. But the NDAs were not all. There was much more happening in the background, and it just got more terrifying. If a woman dared to speak out or attempted to tell anyone about what had happened to her, Harvey would go on a different route, crush their reputation. The army of spies as they began to be known included lawyers, private investigators, and even former Israeli intelligence officers who were given easy instructions, silence the accusations. Through a variety of measures, they did exactly that. One private investigator even posed as an activist to trick Rose McGowan into telling them her story, all while reporting it back to Weinstein. This was yet another tactic designed to scare women to never speak out. If they spoke to one person for a lengthy period only to find out they had been lied to, their level of trust was shattered. It was far less likely that they would ever speak out again and Harvey was all aware of the fact. The private investigators in the meantime were busy collecting intelligence on anyone who might break the story, whether it be journalists or the women themselves. When Ronan Farrow decided to start his investigation into the untold horrors of Harvey Weinstein, he found himself in the thick of it almost immediately. Personal details about himself and his family were weaponized against him in an attempt to stop him from releasing the groundbreaking New Yorker article. But thankfully, none of it worked. He wasn't the only reporter who would face intimidation from the army as they were instructed to compile unflattering information on anyone and everyone who had ever even thought about reporting on his behavior. 
Others, including David Carr, Ben Wallace, and Jody Cantor faced veiled threats as they worked too. Almost every woman that had to tell a story was allegedly spied on and had their personal history dug up by the army. Just imagine how terrifying that really is. But eventually people came out despite the fear, the intimidation and the power plays and Harvey Weinstein's empire came crashing down around him. In 2017, as more and more allegations came flooding in about Harvey Weinstein's terrifying tendency to harass and take advantage of seemingly every woman that had the unfortunate experience of encountering him, his life finally started to fall apart. Shortly after the release of the New York Times article and the New Yorker article, news came out that Weinstein had been fired from his own company. In the company statement, they wrote, In light of new information about misconduct by Harvey Weinstein that has emerged in the past few days, the directors of the Weinstein Company have determined and informed Harvey Weinstein that his employment with the Weinstein Company is terminated effective immediately. Being fired from your own company is difficult enough, but being fired from a company that has your own damn name is just embarrassing. Still, I do find myself curious about the in light of new information part of the statement. Do I truly believe that no board members in that company knew what was going on before the articles were published? No, and I'll tell you why. You see, shortly after the company's announcement, a letter was released from the employees who worked under Weinstein. Not only had he been an absolute monster and terrifying presence in the lives of countless women, but his atrocious behavior steeped deeply into his office. The first few lines of the letter read in part, "'We all knew we were working for a man with an infamous temper. We did not know we were working for a serial sexual predator. We knew that our boss could be manipulative. We did not know that he used his power to systematically assault and silence women. We had an idea that he was a womanizer who had extramarital affairs. We did not know he was a violent aggressor and alleged rapist. But to say we are shocked and surprised only makes us part of the problem. As you keep reading the letter, the current employees ask to be let out of their NDA and for former employees to be let out of their NDAs so they could speak freely. It seems that Harvey Weinstein's company was ripe with abusive practices, manipulative actions, and fear-inducing behavior for decades. Former Miramax head of marketing, Mark Lipsky, says that both Harvey and his brother, but more Harvey, were cruel and every girl in the office cried. And this was at Miramax, a company established decades before Weinstein's abuses truly came to light. These were the warning signs, but no one listened. So do I believe that the board members of his company were completely unaware of what might be going on with the company's namesake? No, I don't. But that's just, of course, my opinion and my thinking. Still, as time went on, the walls continued to close in around Weinstein, with his kingdom being brought down piece by piece. Soon, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences voted well in excess of the required two thirds majority to immediately expel him from the Academy. While this decision wasn't particularly surprising to anyone, it is one that is exceedingly rare. When it boils down to it, it pretty much amounts to a death sentence in Hollywood. Then came the next big hit, a lifetime ban from the Producers Guild. This was an unprecedented move and something that the Guild claimed would show that sexual harassment can no longer be tolerated in our industry or within the ranks of Producers Guild membership. The King had officially fallen out of Hollywood's good graces and the stream of accusations against him brought up the concerning pattern of a terrifying amount of men in Hollywood who had similar patterns of behavior. From director James Toback to actor Kevin Spacey to many, many more, the fall of Harvey came with a special social reckoning of the way Hollywood works or the way it's always been. The same justification Harvey Weinstein used to lure women into his room and manipulate them with power dynamics and fear was finally brought out into the limelight. But as Hollywood continued to grapple with their open secrets, Weinstein had other things to worry about. Sure, he was cast out of the club, but that was the least of his problems when the law started to come for him. Right as his former company filed for bankruptcy after a relentless couple of months of debilitating negative press, it was time for the rest of the world to start crumbling down around him. It was time for some lawsuits. While Weinstein was being ousted by Hollywood and more allegations continued to explode in mainstream media, police and investigators were actually paying attention. By November, the NYPD announced, we have an actual case here, after finding that multiple allegations seemed to be credible and that they were working together evidence for an arrest warrant. So yay for the police doing their jobs for once. 
Now, it wouldn't take them long to gather all the evidence they needed to finally go after the person who fell from grace in such a spectacular fashion that he was now deemed the most hated man in Hollywood. By May, 2018, a little less than a year before the groundbreaking articles from the New York journalist blew up in one of the most shocking stories to hit the stands, Harvey Weinstein was finally arrested on rape charges. This was 30 years coming, but he wasn't going to go down without a fight. As Harvey turned himself into authorities, he was granted a $1 million bail, which despite his year of bad press was not impossible for him to pay off. Charged with first degree rape, third degree and first degree criminal sex act, Harvey Weinstein wasn't a free man. He was ordered to wear a monitoring device and give up his passport, but he sure as hell wasn't waiting in jail either. Not shockingly, he opted to plead not guilty. And so the circus began. By July, his battle would get that much more difficult when the New York District Attorney's Office stacked up more charges against him, saying that the indictment was the result of the extraordinary courage exhibited by the survivors who had continued to come forward. By the time the trial would officially begin in January, 2020, he had over five charges he needed to answer to, and he had just the right person to help him, a woman. That's right, Donna Rotano walked into the courtroom with a frail cane using Harvey Weinstein with a mission and a message. The Me Too movement was dangerous and she was just the woman to change the world back to what it had always been. The most hated man in Hollywood was now being represented by who was most likely one of the most hated defense attorneys. And don't feel bad, she loved her role and embraced it with a smile. Harvey hadn't been quiet as to why he wanted a woman as his lead defense attorney. I feel like that's a little bit obvious if you just think about it for two seconds. It seems fairly obvious that they would have hoped it would make him look better in front of a jury but it's possible and maybe even probable that it had the opposite effect. She said some things like, quote, you can't just have it both ways and say, I should be able to do whatever I want without consequences. I should put myself in any situation I want and play the victim. Having voluntary sex with someone, even if it is a begrudging act is not a crime after the fact. Yeah, so all of that makes me feel like I need to immediately take a shower. But the, even if it is a begrudging act is especially horrific and makes me want to vomit. So yeah, that was the person he chose to make him look more sympathetic. And as it turns out, it didn't work the way he had hoped. As the trial began, various survivors stepped forward to do one of the most challenging things anyone could ever do, testify in a courtroom. With a jury, judge, journalists, and what seemed like the whole world's eyes on them, they bravely stepped forward to confront the man who had crushed their spirits and changed their lives forever. One woman, Jessica Mann, who was an aspiring actress when she was sexually assaulted by Weinstein in 2013, came before the court and told the world, I'm not going to give any more power over to the man who already stole my body. It was time for people like him to pay a heavy price, she said, and a heavy price would certainly be paid. As the trial came to a close, the man who terrorized women for over 30 years was finally found guilty in a court of law. If Justice James A. Burke felt so inclined, he would have given him a minimum of five years, but he didn't. Instead, he was given an astonishing 23 years in prison. And at 67 years old, this basically amounted to life. As he handed down the sentence, Justice Burke explained his reasoning and said, "'Although this is a first conviction, "'it is not a first offense. "'There is evidence before me "'of other incidents of sexual assault "'involving a number of women, "'all of which are legitimate considerations for sentence.'" While he was ultimately charged with five counts, there was evidence of much more. But the statute of limitations in New York had made these impossible to prosecute. A statute of limitations that has since changed thanks to the advocacy of survivors. Of course, he and his superstar team of lawyers had attempted an appeal, but were shot down by the New York appeals court in early 2022. But again, his lawyers were granted another chance to argue the case in front of yet another justice in August of 2022. So two years into his sentence, his New York conviction remains in the balance, making the Los Angeles trial, once considered to be the quote, symbolic, all the more important. And before we dig into that Los Angeles trial, we're going to take just a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. A new year is full of new possibilities, but when your e-commerce business is dealing with gift returns, late deliveries, and a mountain of customer emails, you can feel a bit stuck. So ShipStation can help you get there faster. Whether you run a side hustle or a giant warehouse, you can keep customers happy and fulfill more orders than ever, all while cutting shipping costs and managing it from a single dashboard. ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every platform in one place. So it doesn't matter where you sell online. If you're selling on Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more, ShipStation is gonna have you covered. And did you know that over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation? And that 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. 
So make this new year your best year and grow your business with ShipStation. Make sure you go to shipstation.com slash dark dives today and sign up for a free 60 day trial. Again, that's shipstation.com slash dark dives. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, then why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone? Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile, you'll get an unlimited plan for 50% off. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting from just 15 bucks a month. I've been using Mint Mobile for over two years, but this deal is freaking amazing and I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> but right now is the perfect time to switch if you haven't yet. But you have to hurry because this deal is going to end January 15th. And that's right, Mint Mobile is kicking off the year with their best offer ever. Before January 15th, buy any three month plan and get three more months for free, even on their unlimited plan. And all plans are going to come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So again, buy any three month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash dark dives. That's mintmobile.com slash dark dives. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash dark dives. Hurry, the offer ends January 15th. It was time for round two for Harvey Weinstein as the trial in Los Angeles began in November, 2022. This time he was facing 11 sexual assault charges, which involved five different women, with some of them coming from over 10 years ago. Later, it would be dropped to seven charges involving four women. The charges came in slowly with the pandemic delaying Weinstein's extradition proceedings from Rikers Island in New York over to Los Angeles. But when they finally came, he maintained his innocence as he has since the accusations emerged back in 2017. He acknowledges that he has caused a lot of pain, but never admitted to any of the charges. In Los Angeles, his lawyers backed him up more and more. Their opening statements shocked the courtroom full of influencers, podcasters, and journalists eager to cover the story. Mark Worksman and Alan Jackson, the new lawyers, walked into opening statements with a vengeance, calling Jennifer Siebel Newsom, who was the wife of Governor Gavin Newsom, quote, just another bimbo who slept with Harvey Weinstein to get ahead. However, their victim blaming and attacks didn't seem to stop the survivors who once again walked into the courtroom to tell their stories. Jane Doe, who remained anonymous, took the stand to recount the horrific details of what had allegedly happened to her. Her story brought jurors to tears and she was only one of over 80 witnesses that would be brought to testify. The trial went on for over six weeks. As each woman came forward to detail their remarkably similar stories of Harvey Weinstein inviting them into his hotel room for meetings or spontaneously showing up at theirs, his lawyers did their very best to do everything they could to discredit them. They showed the alleged victim's Instagram stories to the jury, saying that since they all appeared happy on social media after the alleged assaults had taken place, they must be lying. Of course, they also described the alleged attacks as consensual sexual encounters and used to advance their careers. But as Marlene Martinez, the prosecutor in the case presented her final arguments, she portrayed a much different story. This was a man that knew his power and was quote, a predator who used hotels as his trap. She pointed out the similarities between the women's stories and played an audio recording from an Italian model in New York who had been fitted with a wire back in 2015 as part of a sting operation. He had invited her up to his room and told her he was going to take a shower. When she responded with discomfort and told him she did not want to be put in a sexual situation, he met that by saying things like, we won't do that, we'll do other things, but not that. He mentioned a massage and told her not to be shy. If there was ever damning evidence against someone, this was pretty much it. And with this closing argument, the Los Angeles trial came to an end and the jury finally went into deliberation. After nine days of deliberation, they finally came back with a verdict. Harvey Weinstein was found guilty of rape and sexual assault of just one of the four accusers in the trial. He was acquitted of a sexual battery allegation by one of the accusers and for two of them, a mistrial was declared. With a trial that involved a stunning display of sexism from the defense attorneys who utilized statements like, regret is not the same thing as rape in their closing arguments, this verdict can be quite a disappointment. But as Siebel Newsom, one of the accusers said in a statement, Harvey Weinstein will never be able to rape another woman. He will spend the rest of his life behind bars where he belongs. Throughout the trial, Weinstein's lawyers used sexism, misogyny, and bullying tactics to intimidate, demean, and ridicule us survivors. The trial was a stark reminder that we as a society have work to do. 
We'll have to see what happens next as we wait for the sentencing to hold our breath before we learn if the two mistrials will prompt yet another trial for the fallen king. But even with these results, the saga still might not be over. In June, 2022, British prosecutors authorized additional charges against him for indecent assault. So it does seem likely that Weinstein has more legal battles to look forward to in the future. What all started way back in 2017 with some incredible reporting and outrageously brave women still continues on to this day. It is by far one of the biggest stories to hit the news stream in our lifetimes, and we can only hope it changes some of the dynamics of this world. The thing is, the Harvey Weinstein story isn't just about him, but it's about our culture in general. It's a culture that has let the accusers escape blame and thrown victims to the side for far too long. All survivors deserve justice. They deserve to speak their truth and they deserve to be heard. We can only hope that this can open a few more doors for them. But as for now, we're just going to have to wait and see for what is next for both the culture and the Harvey Weinstein saga. Hopefully one day something changes so we don't have to hear another story as horrifying as this ever again. But with all of that being said, that is where I'm ending today's episode of Dark Dives. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.